Well, this is the engine compartment of a 1971 Plymouth GTX. Uh, really a neat car. This is a correct, documented, with paperwork, V-code car, which designates it as a 446 pack. This is the way this guy came from the factory, as a 446 pack. It wasn't added. Um, the, the motor has a set of chrome valve can covers on it, which from the factory they would have been painted orange, but certainly no one's going to complain about a set of taller chrome valve can covers. has a correct air cleaner on it, has a correct uh, three Holly uh, tri power setup on it. It does have a set of uh, aftermarket headers. They look like they're high temp coated. Uh, I'm going to call them inch and three quarters. They might be inch and seven eighths, but they are a set of long tube headers. These guys like that size header on the street. They really liked it. Uh, new water pump on it. You can see the motor has been out and completely freshened up. Everything on the motor is new. Um, no leaks whatsoever on the valve pans. Of course, it's impossible to leak on the air, um, intake manifold. Uh, let's see. The uh, timing chain cover is new in the front. Uh, it has a chrome pulley on the front of it. Why? I have no idea, but it does. Seven blade clutch fan on it, nice and tight, just the way it should be. Uh, correct fan shroud and 26 inch uh, wide high flow radiator that uh, Mopar used on these guys. Uh, it has a big wheel on the um, power steering pump. It does have power steering and power brakes. Uh, these cars were never offered with air conditioning. It was not an option, couldn't get it on a six pack car. Could not. Um, has a uh, cooler which designates it as either a three, uh, 355 or a 391 gear ratio, at least from the factory. Uh, I don't know what it houses now, but that's the way this car was born. Fender panels are really, really nice and clean inside, uh, as is the uh, firewall area. You can see the uh, plastic vent grates are still intact and just as clean and nice as you'd ever want to have. It has dual horns on it. There is absolutely nothing on the front of this car that has been disrupted. Absolutely nothing. New battery in it. Uh, new uh, dual stage master cylinder also. Pressure light distributor, high silicone uh, plug wires installed on it, but um, it is the uh, correct pressure light distributor that belongs with this guy. Correct uh, washer bottle for 1971. The radiator core support has the uh, number, the serial number of the car here on it. Uh, so it's never been disrupted, it's never been wrecked, there's no trauma whatsoever to the front end of this car. Also, this number coincides with the VIN plate that's on the top of the dash and the fender tag that is installed on the uh, fender well here. This fender tag has so many numbers and letters on it, it's, it's a huge option car. Yeah, I don't think there's room to put any more options on this thing. That's how loaded up it is. It has the air induction hood system on it, which you can see. These guys are very pricey if you need to go buy one. Um, this one is correct for the car. The underhood of this car is just absolutely as it was in 1971 when it left the factory, with the exception of chrome valve fan covers and headers. These motors were advertised at 390 horsepower, 385 in, in um, uh, 71. I don't know where they lost five horsepower, probably due to uh, some uh, emission regulations at the time. They just uh, changed the numbers just a little bit. Anyway, uh, they were very, very grossly underrated. These things made a lot of horsepower and a ton of torque. Great car to drive. They made a great sound when you laid into it. Uh, it's just a fantastic uh, uh, vehicle. And very rare. 71 was the last year you could get this stuff. And this, this is a kind of the end of an era for most everyone. Heater hose is also hooked up to the passenger compartment and functional. So it does have heat in the event that it would go to some of the northern states where they'd need it. Of course, here in Florida or Alabama or Georgia, uh, Louisiana, generally they take these and just loop them, disconnect them completely so there's no heat whatsoever going to the passenger compartment. These, however, are still uh, hooked up in their uh, original configuration. This is a great car. Uh, fantastic engine compartment. I really like the color on it. It's kind of a darker yellow. I don't know what the designation is for the color, but it's a great combination with all the black accents. That's the engine compartment. Let's go around the rest of it. You are at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and today we got a really, really neat vehicle. It's the end of an era, 1971. Plymouth GTX. 
but this is no normal one. This thing's a uh, 446 pack car, so we're going to go around it and show you everything we can on it. The hood gap to the front fender is absolutely as sweet as can be. About an eighth of an inch, you can see that in the video. All the way around, the same thing on this side, just as nice as you'd ever want to fit it. Paint on the car is certainly much better than driver quality, much better than it ever was in 1971 uh, when it, this car was released. Just the paint on it is, I can't call it show quality, but it's certainly so much better than the driver quality paint job. Of course, semi-flat black on the uh, section of the raised hood here with the air driver system on it. There's a little raised portion here. Um, it's not a bubble. It apparently was cast into this piece of uh, uh, molded material whenever uh, it was made. Uh, we didn't make it, Chrysler did, or someone made it for them, obviously. But anyway, there's a little bubble there. I don't know why they didn't flatten that out or sand it out before they painted it, but they did. At any rate, it's flat black through the center. The air grabber hood with the designation does function. has the correct hood pins with the cup type uh, stainless uh, uh, basils around them. Gap across the front is really nice on this car. I really like the gap on both sides of the hood and the front, right on the money. Um, Plymouth designation is inset into here, which of course your Plymouth insignia. Uh, front bumper. The chrome on it is absolutely beautiful. You can see that. It's just as nice as you'd ever want to buy. Uh, Argent type painted plastic uh, grill in it. There's no chips in the grill whatsoever. GTX designation. On the headlight basils, the same way. Everything on the front end of that grill is nice. There's no chips from uh, stones hitting it through the ears. No cracked pieces of plastic in it. Absolutely none. Uh, parking lights are just as clean as can be in this thing. The, the um, license plate frame is still in the front. We'll probably take that off. Um, aesthetically, it doesn't help things, and if you're in a state where you don't need it, it certainly isn't going to be something you're going to keep. There's a really nice grill area there that would open up and really give you a more dramatic front end without that guy on it. It has the Ibarau uh, chin-type spoilers on it uh, that were a GTX option on this car. A uh, uh, air deflectors, uh, air dam, spoilers, whatever you want to call them, uh, that's what they are. Front bumper fitment can't be any nicer. I mean, it is literally as nice a fit as you could ever hope to find on a car. It's right on the money. Chrome is just exemplary. There's no marks whatsoever on the front of it, on the top part of it anywhere. No scratches, no nothing. Just as nice a chrome as you'd ever hope to find. So the front end of this car is really spot on. There's really nothing for us to do. We're not going to adjust the hood because there's no reason to. The bumper fitment is just as sweet as you'd ever want to find, and there are no stone chips or marks or scuffs. Um, the only other irregularity is this little lump here. And again, why it's there, I have no idea. But it was made that way when it was new, so there it is. Let's go down the side, see what we can find there. Okay, driver's side, 446. That's what it is, 446 back car, real v code car. Side marker light in the front, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, the pinstriping, and this is the way this came from the factory. This wasn't added by uh, somebody. This is the way these cars came. Fender lip molding, even though it's down in, doesn't have any marks, and I don't know how you put one there without putting a big chunk out of the uh, fender, but at any rate, it doesn't have any marks on it. Again, the hood fitment to the uh, uh, fender, to the door. Door in the front fits really nicely. Very, very nice. Um, correct fasteners on the bin plate, very legible. Uh, where the dash transitions onto the base of the windshield, it is absolutely as clean as it was the day this car was uh, produced. Trim around the front window, no marks whatsoever. It is a tinted windshield in the front of this guy. Tinted windshield and it has a sun shade fade. Uh, the um, dash pad it has absolutely no marks whatsoever on it. There are no uh, irregularities in it or cracks or, or marks or deviations whatsoever. Everything is nice and black the way it should be on the uh, top of the dashboard. Correct wiper arms and blades. You can't see them, they're tucked down inside here, but they are the correct wiper arms and blades on this vehicle. Final top, obviously we got a final top. 
and the fitment is just as sweet as you'd ever find. There's no bubbling, no places where it's starting to lift. It's tucked down into the uh, uh, drip rail here, just as nice as can be, which, by the way, drip rail has no dings or marks anything on it. It's just as nice a one as you'd ever want to find. Window fitment, check that out. Really fits nicely. Very nice. Wipes whiskers, all new, nice and fresh. Nice resilient rubber on them. The chrome pieces that go across the top. This is chrome too, by the way, right here. Um, across the top of the door here to accent this. This is all nice GTX stuff. Roadrunners didn't come this way. You got a real premium vehicle when you bought a GTX. Tinted glass too on the sides. And it's definitely tinted. Chrome dual sport mirrors. They could have been color keyed or they could have been chrome. This guy chose to put them on chrome and they really give a nice accentuation to the car. Door handles, no patina whatsoever, absolutely none, zero. Again, our pinstriping continuing down the side of the car, and this door definitely has to go in. See? It's loose just from usage, and then someone maybe just didn't adjust it correctly. That will be adjusted. Uh, GTX designation. Rocker panel molding, no heel kicks or anything on it, really looks nice and uh, straight. Uh, the flutes along the bottom don't have any scuffs or, or, or marks on them either. Trim around the uh, rear wheel well, same as it was on the front, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Again, our pinstriping continuing down the side of the car and to the back. This is all tin on this car. I did see the undercarriage in this car and it's really spot on. Really, really nice car. The um, trim around the rear window, same as the front, there's no marks whatsoever. I believe it is the original hat shelf in it, hat rack. It does have the uh, correct speaker enclosures in them. I don't know if there's speakers in it, but I can't really tell. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but at any rate, there's no Mickey Mouse speakers or anything added to the top of it. Order of the panel is just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Side marker light, really flush mount, check that out. And the bumper too, check that, that's really neat. Uh, other than the door adjust, which pretty easy, we'll do that. In fact, I'll do that since we're done here with the video. Um, that's, uh, that's about as nice a side of the car you could ever hope to find. Nice swell, I can't say it's laser straight because it isn't. The quarter panels really swell out. You could put some serious rubber underneath this thing if you decided to do some racing with it. You could put it easily a set of 12 inch Goodyear's under there. Or Hoosiers or whatever you wanted to use. Anyway, 15 inch rally wheels. Uh, the correct Argent, dark style Argent uh, centers in them. Trim rings are really nice. BFG, radial TA is everybody's choice of tires right now. And uh, the side of this car is just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. You cannot get a better one. Still no stone chips, marks, scratches, or marks in the paint. Absolutely none. Okay, tail section of our 71 GTX v code car. And again, the uh, gap around this deck lid is just as sweet as you'd ever, ever want to find. You know, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a rise on both sides here. It needs to go down just a hair. Let's see. Nope, it's not going to go down. And probably the reason is. I'm going to check it, but the reason is probably that it had new rubbers put around as a seal. And until that rubber compresses and seals itself, it's going to be up just a little bit. It's, you know, it's sealing as it should. It's just there's too much rubber compression to push down on this thing, and uh, you'd have to really slam it. We could adjust it to go down, but you'd really have to lay into it. Best thing to do is just let it settle for a while and then go ahead and readjust it and this will come right down because the gap on this side raised and this side is exactly the same. Rear spoiler, semi-flat black just the way it should be. That's also an option on this car. The um, rear bumper fitment. Wow. Oh, GTX Plymouth designation. Um, the bumper is absolutely absolutely perfect just as the front one was. You could not possibly get that to fit any better. Tail lights in the back, uh, nice and clear. Uh, basils around them don't appear to have any deterioration and they don't. Absolutely none. 
Uh, their inset into the bumper really gives it a nice dramatic look. Uh, the correct style exhaust uh, tips for 1971 also slash cut tucked under there. And the volance underneath the bumper that's painted the same color as the car. There's no pull marks or uh, distortion or anything on it. Absolutely as nice as you could hope to find. No marks on the back part of the bumper. And the chrome on this bumper in the back is just as exemplary as it was on the front one. That's it. Front, side, back end. One more side to go yet, and then we pretty much presented the whole car outside for you. Okay, our last side, passenger side. And again, I want to show you something. The reason I know this is rubber, watch this if I push down in the center. It goes down and it compresses the rubber and lines up just as it should. So once this rubber does compress from this new trunk seal, this will go down into where it's supposed to be and it, it'll be happy. A side marker light just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Tin, again, nice sharp edges along the bottoms of the quarters and on the fender lips. There's no added bond over anything in this car. Trim around the back window, which is also tinted. You got tinted glass around this whole vehicle. It completely around this tinted glass. At least it appears that way. Trim around the base of the top, same as the other side, you know, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Uh, paint on this quarter panel is really, really nice. GTX designation on the side. Again, this stuff here is usually deteriorated, and this one is not. This is as new as it was when it left the factory. Really, really impressive how nice that is. Usually this is all pitted here. It, this is it. Uh, window fitment's really nice. It seals up as it should. A little tiny bit of a... Yeah, I don't even want to... Maybe a broom fell against here or something. you got to really look to see it, but there's a very... Forget it. I don't even call it a mark. Vinyl top fits into the uh, drip grill just as sweet as you'd ever want to find. Wipes whiskers. Really, really nice. Forgot the door edge here. This one could also be in. You can hear it. it, it the both doors are loose. They need to both be pulled in just a little bit. It'll give me something to do in my spare time. Okay, same thing on the uh, front here. Again, this may have been a stone chip. Again, you got to really look for it. I'm, I'm trying to point out everything that there possibly is. These are so minuscule that I, I don't even, you have to really look. In fact, i got to look to find it again, and I just saw it. What the hell is it? There it is. Okay, our other right-hand uh, chrome-plated mirror. Uh, paint on this door. Paint on this whole car is just exemplary. It cannot be any nicer or better than it is. The front fitment is always nice on these cars. It's just that door has to go in just a little tiny bit on each side. Tighten them up some. Correct antenna, single mast. Um, wheel lip molding in the front here. As nice as it was for the other three. Side marker lamp, 446 designation. And another wheel lip with no marks. And we're back where we started. I, not a stone chip, not a mark. Um, not a dent, uh, a couple of door adjusts. I, I it, it, you know, a, a deck lid that has new rubber underneath it that's going to go down on its own if you let it sit for a while. Uh, I, I don't see anything on this car, absolutely nothing. Chrysler Pentastar, still on the right hand quarter where it, or quarter uh, fender where it belongs on the bottom. Um, all the trim rings are just as nice and fresh as you'd ever want to find. Correct centers on the rally wheels. Uh, it's a 446 pack V code car, uh, last of an era. They just didn't make them after this. This was it. This is the grand finale. And uh, this particular vehicle is a very high option car. First of all, it's a GTX, not a Roadrunner. So it comes with a lot of other amenities and add ons that you don't get with a Roadrunner, like a lot of this trim and chrome stuff. Uh, it has a rear spoiler as an option, a vinyl top as an option, tinted glass as an option, uh, chin spoilers, uh, uh, air induction uh, hood. Uh, just on and on and on. Power steering, power brakes, just in the front. <laughs> it's, it's a loaded up vehicle. The tag is completely full and Devin will have a picture of it on there for you to... In fact, he even breaks them down for you anymore. I think he gives you a complete breakdown of what he can on the uh, uh, tag showing the options. 
really a neat vehicle. Uh, this is something that, uh, again, it's the end of an era. It's the end of uh, the muscle car uh, theme for most of the manufacturers. And um, it's available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. Uh, there were very few 71s produced at that time. The insurance companies started raising the insurance. Gas prices started going up. Muscle car sales started declining, and like I said, this is the end of an era, so they didn't produce as many in 71, not even close to what they did in 68 and 69. This particular car being a high option car and a real V-code car with documentation that we're going to show you. We have bill sheets, we have that much paperwork for this car showing you what it is and, and verifying its authenticity. But we encourage everybody to come down and take a look at these cars. Jump on a bird, jump in your car, go for a weekend ride with mom or whoever, and uh, come down and take a look at these cars in person. That way you know exactly what you're getting. But if you can't, that's why we're doing these videos. We try to pick out every little imperfection we can. I mean, even ridiculous things that I can't even find a second time, uh, I try to point out. If I see something, I point it out. If I miss something, I apologize. I really try my very best to pick out every irregularity that I can, within reason. This is not a new Porsche GT3. Never was, never will be. Uh, the fitment and the, the finish and, and the quality of this car was not what a Porsche or a Ferrari is today, or a Toyota, really, for that matter. These were not done with lasers and, and, and a, a digital uh, lifestyle. This stuff was done by hand with stamping machines and installed by guys with their own hands putting them together. It wasn't automatically done. Take a look at this car at your Hangster's website. Uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at. It's very nominally priced for what you're getting and it's an investment in history. Okay, uh, interior 1971 Plymouth GTX uh, headliner. Tight as a drum, just like new. Um, visor light, or visor light, um, dome light, uh, still functioning as it should. The stitching still nice and tight on the original. Um, sun visors, uh, no milkiness to the uh, rear view mirror, which is a day night mirror also. And the dashboard, we saw it from the uh, outside in the windshield, but there are absolutely no marks or cracks whatsoever on the padded dash in the vehicle. The tri-spoke steering wheel, still nice resilient through the center. Um, horn that works. The um, steering wheel has no cracks in it. Usually these things, especially the black ones from age, have usually a crack here, a crack here, or a crack here. This has none, absolutely zero. Uh, trim around the uh, window and the uh, A pillars. The, and the, the top, just as nice as can be. There's absolutely no uh, uh, no deterioration whatsoever on any of the plastic components. Uh, nice cluster on it. Um, the, the faces are nice and clean and clear, the plastic on them. You got a speedometer, you got a fuel gauge, temp gauge, amp gauge, an oil pressure gauge. Uh, the original equipment, uh, radio still intact in the vehicle. Um, wood grain everywhere. Wood grain on the back, sides panels there on the uh, front doors as you can see, and it, it transitions onto the dash piece which is also set into uh, uh, wood the way it was in 1971. In a GTX, Roadrunners did not come with these amenities. They did not. Uh, GTX interior, the correct style vinyl, the correct type of vinyl even on it. High back buckets in it that match the back, absolutely perfect. Side panels in the back are as nice as you'd ever want to find. Um, Armrests in the back, trash trays in the back too. Huh? Instead of being incorporated into the armrest, they're actually on the side of the uh, panel. It's a molded panel in the back. Again, GTX a little bit different than a Roadrunner. It's a little bit higher end car. It's a lot of different uh, amenities they put in these cars. Uh, console, there's no cracks or marks whatsoever in it. Uh, black plastic as nice as can be. Glove box in the center. Slap shift uh, automatic transmission in it. Um, Door sill panels absolutely polished as, as the new. They probably are new. All new rubbers on this car. Everything's been replaced seal-wise on it, around the windows, inside the doors, and of course we know the trunk. Um, all the chrome, the, your window cranks, your door actuators, nice and clean. The chrome on the door itself is nice and clean and crisp. When you look inside the door jams themselves, just like it was 1971 yet. It, it nice and clean and clear. There's no dirt, no rust or anything around the uh, uh, hinges. Uh, loop pile carpeting in it. 
seat belts in the front, shoulder belts also in the front, and seat belts in the rear. So you have an entire complement of seat belts in this vehicle also. GTX floor mats in it. I'm sure they're aftermarket, but still a nice addition to this car to have a set of GTX mats front and back. Uh, they're both there. Jeez, oh man, guys must have smoked a lot. There's a trash tray here, trash tray on each side there, and a trash tray in the center here. Man, you could burn up a, you could have a three alarmer going on in here back then. Um, I don't see anything at all in this car that doesn't, uh, doesn't get me excited as to its originality and just the way it was in 1971. Even the grain in the uh, vinyl seats and everything is correct for 1971. Uh, no marks on the dash, the steering wheel, the, the console, everything on this car is just as uh, fresh and nice as you could ever hope to find. So you have a good representation of a real bona fide documented, which we're going to show you, uh, 71 GTX 446 pack car, a real V-code car. Check out Hangsters, Daytona Beach, Florida. Neat. People always ask about documentation, what do you have for paperwork? Uh, we don't really care about receipts, you know, for oil changes or whatever because these cars are complete redos anyway but what we do try to concentrate on with a car of this quality is a uh, uh, history of uh, how it originated is it a real one you know do we have documentation yeah we do there's a well this is a copy of the uh, the build sheet that came with it I gotta put my cheaters on here uh, that came with it there's the original owner's manual that came with the car uh, there's a raft of information on this car there's a uh, uh, Govier report on the car, complete Govier report. Uh, it tells you all about the vehicle itself. 71 Chrysler uh, Plymouth cars tells you how many were produced, the options on the car, the pricing. Um, complete restoration photo showing the car being completely stripped down to bare tin and, and brought back again. You can see the original floor is still intact in the car. Um, the car being uh, finished up here, being done. Again, copies of Govier's report, a breakdown of all the, uh, uh, this is a copy of it, but it, it's in Govier's report of all the options on this car, and you can see it's pretty lengthy. It goes down from beginning to end here showing you everything about the car. <clears throat> car being loaded up for delivery. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Chrysler showing that the uh, vehicle is authentic. Here's a uh, uh, certificate of uh, title from the state of California yet from 1998. Uh, Jesus, vehicle transfer papers, um, remember I told you it was rare? This is number 17 of 38 in a VIN sequence for 71 446 pack Plymouth GTXs. 38, really? You wanted rarity, here it is. Uh, complete Govier report again, Gail went over the whole uh, car, broke everything down for you. Here is the original, not a copy, but the original build sheet on it. Even on the bottom it says 01 special handling car. Now, these cars were very special cars. They were built uh, uh, by Chrysler pretty much by hand at that point in time and uh, it's a complete documented history of the car. Also Devin's going to show you in the trunk uh, original equipment type spare in it. The jack is there and also um, from California the original selling dealer the uh, license plate frames are still there front and back so you have a nice original car here with a ton of documentation with it. And I just noticed that when I was opening the trunk, on the keys, here's the original tag that came with the keys back in 1971 so that you could use that as a, a way to duplicate it. You keep it in your wallet. If you lose a key, go to Chrysler dealer. He'll make you a set of keys for it. So you have everything that this car was released with, including the original set of keys. Neat car. Check it out. Plymouth GTX. Let's see what we got here. We have a horn. That's weird. I knew it worked. Just had to hit it at the right spot. Um, steering wheel's nice. No cracks, no nothing on it. Um, speedometer, I'm sure, is going to work, but it's probably going to jump a little bit. We have the, a new cable ordered for it. Oil pressure, nice and high, just the way it should be. Gasoline, point a quarter and a half, which is a lot of fuel for us. Um, the alternator charging just the way it should and a temperature coming up just as it should and a radio that I'm sure will not work and it does not uh, Left turn signal right there just beating itself to death 
And our right turn signal right over here. And it's working just the way it should also. Uh, let's see here. Our air grabber hood. Let's see. Get that guy to work. There's our air grabber. With the teeth on the side of it. It's pretty neat. Then we'll have to get a picture of that for you. It's pretty neat. Uh, let's see. Remote mirror working just fine. Um, slapstick automatic. We're going to go for a ride see how this guy runs. It's the first I've driven this one. Coming up just like it should. Um, the speedometer is functioning. You probably won't hear it in the video, but it is making a little bit of noise. Uh, we definitely have a new cable ordered for it, which will be installed just as soon as we get it. The car runs nice and straight. Uh, let me see. Pulls a little bit to the left. I don't know why it does, but it is. It's pulling a little bit to the left for us. Could be air in a tire, don't really know, but it's very, very slight. It's no big deal. Uh, the uh, nice, tight running car. Feels like it does have 390s in it. Get it a little bit deeper. That would account for the big wheel, the oil holder on the. Uh, Uh, we're definitely going to have to be careful. We got one policeman there. We got another guy sitting right here looking for speeders. So I got to watch. I usually like to cut a car loose down and cross on the back this way, but I guess I can't do that today. Nice running car, though. Really nice running car. Uh, run straight and true. Uh, shifts nice. Drives nice. Nice responsive steering to it. I just can't go. It's 35 mile an hour zone. We got the Gestapo out here on the left, so I'm already at 40 something. Well, we knew we were going to be out today testing. I'm sure we've been reported already. Nice running. Okay, let's try it again. Still a little tiny bit of a pull to the left. I think a lot of it had to do with the brakes. Let me ride the brakes a little bit, see if that squares it away so. Yeah, that was it. It was just a brake dragon, because watch. Now it goes down the road straight as can be. Absolutely straight as you want it to go down the road. Still there I am. That's all it was, was just a brake dragon a little bit. Let's see if how it stops. If it stops. Uh, straight no hands. Yeah, a little tiny bit of a pull to the left. It's one brake puck hanging up there just a little bit. Car pulls nice and straight just the way it should. Definitely needs a speedometer cable. Ronnie has that ordered. It's definitely getting replaced. Can't hear it, but it's definitely making some noise. Okay, we're underneath our 1971 V code 446 pack GTX Plymouth. It's a really rare car, end of an era. Uh, this thing is as nice a vehicle underneath as it was on top. Really a great car. Uh, you can see the skid plate that was part of the uh, K member that they used for the 446 pack and Emmy cars. It's still intact, just the way it could be. The correct sway bar system also. It has um, disc brakes in the front. Has uh, calipers that are newer style calipers. They look like they're nice and fresh. The spindles appear to be also new and replaced. Ball joints, tie rod ends are also been uh, replaced. Associated hardware, your brake lines in the front are also new. Ah, uh, let's see. Jeez. 440 hypo motor. It is not a numbers correct motor. However, it is a definite 440 hypo engine. Uh, bell housing, there's no leaks, and the motor has been out. Everything is all freshly painted. You can see everything is absolutely done, brand spanking new. Everything uh, addressed. Chrome oil pan, not that, that makes it any faster, but it shine, makes it a lot shinier. Um, the correct steel fuel uh, lines that go up for pulling the uh, tranny go up to the original uh, 26 inch radiator that's with this guy. Some frames on the car are 
really nice. Uh, someone has put a jack stand here instead of the subframe. There's a little tiny curvature there on that front torque box that the, the uh, uh, fender well transitions onto. Uh, certainly didn't hurt anything structurally. It, uh, uh, pretty much the same on both sides. That's where they decided to put jack stands. The subframes themselves, really solid. No deterioration, crusty. Uh, rust or corrosion or anything whatsoever on them. There's a little tear in this one from somebody shipping it, tying it down during shipment. This one doesn't have one. Uh, the transitional piece of the subframe on the front where the, your uh, rear mount for the tranny is, um, really nice. There's no deterioration, there's no marks, no jack marks, no nothing whatsoever on it. Again, no jack marks on this. This is really amazing. Usually you find some jack marks here and there. There are none. Original floor pans. There's no question they are the original floor pans on this vehicle. Uh, it it uh, has the original splatter undercoating it from Mopar, the way they came from the factory. Original uh, fuel lines also, double fuel lines the way they were in uh, 1971 for emissions for the uh, breather. Uh, brake lines, still the original wrapped spiral uh, brake lines that go toward the rear. Inch and three quarter long tube headers on it, three inch collector going into a two and a half inch uh, primary exhaust pipe. 77, 727 tranny, it is a numbers correct transmission for the part. So the tranny is correct, the only thing incorrect is the uh, engine not having the correct numbers on it. But it is a 440 hypo motor. Floor pans again, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. There's no leaks on the uh, tail shaft. No leaks on the transmission itself, absolutely none on the uh, uh, speedometer drive. This speedometer drive is going to have to be replaced. There's, it's laying up against the uh, header pipe here, the exhaust manifold uh, primary pipe, and I guarantee it's going to be an issue, so we got to replace that. In fact, I think Jeff did... Uh, or Donnie did mention that uh, he had to order one for it, but that has to be replaced. Uh, let's see, parking brake, original and functional, just the way it should be. Still the original uh, cables on them, and they work. Both sides. Uh, under chassis mufflers, uh, the, uh, the shorter ones are not exact duplications of the original ones. The original ones are a hell of a lot longer than this, but they have a nice tone to them. The drive shaft has a new U joint in the front, a uh, newer U joint in the back. Torque boxes uh, where your front leaf, or the front part of the leaf spring mounts. Uh, real heavy duty boxed in torque boxes for these six pack cars, and these are both in excellent condition. Jack mark right here, and none over there. Huh. Yeah, a little one. There is one here too. Just couldn't quite see it in the uh, reflection. But there's one on each side where they put jack stands or jacks through the years to jack this guy up. Let's see. Uh, drum brakes in the back. This, of course, the front. We showed you that. Um, leaf springs in the rear of this vehicle. Eight and three quarter heavy duty Mopar rear end in it. It does have a set of huge shocks on the back of this thing. And they are air shocks too, by the way. I don't know why they put air shocks on it, but they did. Um, you can adjust the ride height in the rear. I guess it's a aesthetic thing if you want the back end to be a little bit rakier. Uh, you can. Again, a little pull right here where it was hooked on. Same thing right here. Uh, this was done in shipment of these cars. It was just normal for, for you to see little pull marks in these holes in the frame. That's the way they secured the cars uh, during shipment and from a vehicle rocking back and forth, plus the guy tightening it down with the ratchet usually uh, uh, caused a little bit of a pull on it. Again, nothing to compromise it structurally, absolutely nothing. Uh, correct type uh, mounts for the rear of the uh, mufflers. Uh, I'm going to call these, uh, these are two and a half, I'm going to call these two and an eighth. They're a little bit uh, smaller tailpipes coming out, going into the correct fluted style uh, it's like a two-piece uh, exhaust tip on these guys in 1971. It had flutes cut into it, and then you could see like orange uh, paint inside of there uh, where the actual exhaust tip was. 
kind of a neat setup. It gives, it gives it a nice look. Original gas tank, a little punch mark right here from somebody uh, hitting it with their hand, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it's not torn or really distressed or anything. It's just a little mark there from something. I have no idea what it could be from. Drop downs and the quarters are original. The tabs are still uh, uh, present on them. Uh, the floor it appears to be the original floor. I don't see anywhere where it's been disrupted or uh, replaced through the years. The original fuel lines, no leaks on the uh, rear differential. And again, you can look, there's no leaks whatsoever on this vehicle at this point. It doesn't mean a year or two years from now or six months from now that you're not going to find a drip on the floor. It's a muscle car. It's the same thing. You think these are bad? Check Porsches and Ferraris. You want to look for uh, oil leaks. <laughs> nice car. I mean, it, this is a nice a uh, uh, 1971 B body Mopar that you could ever hope to find. It is a correct V code car. Uh, we do have documentation to show that that's how it was born as a 446 pack car. Very high option car too. On top of that, it's available at Hanksters, and this is a really really nice car. Take a look at it.